Welcome to Michigan in Focus. I'm Bruce Walker, Great Lakes Regional Editor for the Center Square. It's been a huge couple of weeks for Democrats, flexing their newfound majority muscles in Lansing and the state's labor movement. After passing the House, legislation repealing the state's right-to-work law and reinstating prevailing wage rules passed the Senate and will more than likely be signed into law soon by Governor Gretchen Whitmer. This would break one of her campaign promises. Additionally, Dearborn Democrat Representative Alabas Farhat and more than 30 other Democrats have co-sponsored legislation to offer tax credits to Michigan residents who pay union dues. Joining me to discuss this is the Center Square's Michigan reporter, Scott McClellan. There's a lot to discuss here. So first of all, you wrote this week that Governor Whitmer would break a campaign vow if she signed the repeal of right to work into law. Why don't you explain that just a little bit? So in 2018, Whitmer said that she would end legislative referendum proofing. So what does that mean? Michigan voters hold the right to propose and enact laws called the initiative and the power to approve or reject laws enacted by the legislature called the referendum. To invoke a referendum, a petition must be signed by an equal number of the registered voters of the last gubernatorial election, which is between 5 and 8% of them. And then once voters gather those signatures, they submit them to the state, which verifies their valid signatures. And if so, that question can go on the ballot. From there, if approved by voters, then the petition would move to the legislature, which must enact it or reject it within 40 days of receipt. However, the power of referendum doesn't apply to appropriation bills. Aha. Okay, so therein lies the rub. Exactly. So you can have a policy bill, but if lawmakers attach a dollar amount to it, it makes it referendum proof. So in this particular instance of right to work, they actually included a million dollars as an an appropriation to enact the bill should it be signed into law. Yes. And the reason why Governor Gretchen Whitmer made this promise in 2018 was because she was trying to drum up voter support because Republicans, when they passed right to work in 2012, enacted the same strategy. They allocated a dollar amount to make it harder for Michigan voters to repeal it. And that's why Uh, Michigan Democrats had to take control of the House and the Senate to change the law. There's actually uh, footage of the governor, who was then a senator on uh, the the Senate floor, giving an impassioned speech about how she felt that Democrats and voters were being flamboozled by that exact same strategy that is being employed now. That brings us to House Bill 4235, which aims to offer tax credits for uni dues paid in the state. And the representative Farhat from Dearborn is the majority vice chairman of the House Tax Committee. And according to the bill, a taxpayer may claim a credit against the tax imposed under this part in an amount equal to the qualified union dues paid to a labor organization by the taxpayer during the year. So this gives a full tax credit for government union dues to public employees. So it's not to be confused with the tax deduction, mind you. I had an opportunity to speak with F. Vincent, and his last name escapes me at the moment, from the Mackinac Center. He says this means that if a public employee pays $1,000 in dues, the state, courtesy of Michigan taxpayer, will take $1,000 off of their taxes. If they don't owe $1,000 in taxes, the state will simply write them a check for the difference. So no other state has gone this far. And worse, there's no cap on either the amount the state will pay or how much someone will get back. And unions could theoretically raise dues to $20,000 and the state would pay it. So far, this is uh, still in committees. So uh, we'll, we'll see what, what happens with that. One of the other things that uh, has been passed and will more than likely be signed by their governor is a return to prevailing wage here in Michigan. And Scott, if you could talk a little bit about that, I would appreciate it. So the prevailing wage basically says that the four construction projects, the groups must pay at least equal to the minimum union wage. So before Uh, Republicans had contested this, saying that it drives up taxpayer costs for regular projects. But if you remember, I believe in 2021, Governor Gretchen Whitmer, via executive order, um, reinstated the prevailing wage for one of her uh, departments over Republican outcries. What we're starting to see is that Michigan was more or less a red state, kind of turned into a purple state, and now is a blue state almost uh, through and through. And all of these pro-organized labor bills are being passed 
And it's looking like this will be the lay of the land for the foreseeable future. Bruce, do we know uh, roughly how many Michigan employees belong to a union in 2022? Yes, Scott. According to some of the figures that I looked at from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, about 14 percent of Michigan employees or approximately 590,000 workers belong to a union in 2022. Those are the latest available figures. And the BLS has also reported that 644,000 workers or about 15.3 percent of Michigan workers are represented by unions. So it's not a massive majority of Michigan workers. Workers, but it's still a considerable number when you're looking at 590,000. I mean, you're looking at approximately the population of Detroit. I'm really curious to know what the total amount of their dues would be. And then that taken against the taxes. I'm curious to know how much that's going to cost the state. Well, yes, that that's exactly it right there. Because um, if you are denying the state that revenue by offering credits that uh, will be paid back and can be paid back in actual excess of what was paid in union dues, that could add up and it could be quite considerable. So that is uh, another thing that uh, we can look at down the road if this particular piece of legislation picks up ahead of steam. Well, listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com. This is Bruce Walker, Great Lakes Regional Editor for The Center Square. Please subscribe and thank you for listening. 